In this video, you're going to learn how to simplify complex fractions, and I'm going to show you two different methods for doing it. We're going to go through two examples together. So let's start with this first example. You can see what exactly is a complex fraction. Well, it's basically when you have a fraction inside of a larger fraction. In this case, you can see this fraction bar right here, and you've got fractions in the numerator. You also have fractions in the denominator. So overall, you could say it's pretty complicated or pretty complex. So we want to simplify it so that we don't have fractions within a fraction. And the way that we do that, the first method, is to get common denominators for the numerator so we can combine these into one fraction and get common denominators for the denominator so we can combine those into one fraction. And then this fraction bar right here, you can think of that as a division sign and dividing is like multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'll show you what I mean in just a second. When we look at these two fractions in the numerator, we've got this quantity x minus 2 and this quantity x plus 2. And they really don't have anything in common. They're two different binomials. So what I'm going to do in order to get a common denominator is I'm going to multiply by what's missing. So what I mean by that is this fraction has an x plus 2. This fraction does not have an x plus 2. So let's multiply the numerator and denominator of this fraction by x plus 2. x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 is 1. So it's not changing the value of that fraction. It's just changing the way that it looks. Now this guy over here has an x plus 2 in the denominator, but it's missing an x minus 2. So let's go ahead and multiply the numerator and denominator by x minus 2. Okay, now what we can do, because they have a common denominator, is we can combine them together into one fraction with that common denominator. So let's go ahead and do that over here. The denominator I'm going to leave in factored form. This is just going to be x plus 2 and x minus 2. But the numerator I'm going to distribute. We get 3x plus 6 minus the quantity 2x minus 4. Now here's where students sometimes go a little bit off track. They forget to put the parentheses around this whole quantity here. See how we're subtracting? You want to subtract that whole group. And so if you don't do that, you're going to have this as a negative 2x, but then this will be the opposite. It'll be the wrong sign. So let's go ahead and distribute. So that gives us negative 2x plus 4. Okay, so we have 3x plus 6 minus 2x plus 4. And that simplifies down to 3x plus negative 2x is 1x. 6 plus 4 is 10. So we have x plus 10 in the numerator, x plus 2 over x minus 2 in the denominator. Now all of this represents just the numerator of this complex fraction, right? We're going to do the same thing in the denominator. We're going to combine these into one fraction by getting a common denominator. But here what I notice is that, see this x squared minus 4? I can factor this as a difference of two squares, x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay. Now when I look at these two fractions, I say, hmm, this has an x plus 2 and an x minus 2. This just has an x plus 2. It's missing an x minus 2. If I multiply the denominator by x minus 2, I have to multiply the numerator by x minus 2. Now, what we can do is combine these into one fraction with that common denominator, x plus 2, x minus 2. But in the numerator, we have 4 plus x squared minus 2x. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, write this in descending order, and it's going to look like this. It's going to be x squared minus 2x plus 4 all over our common denominator, which is x plus 2, x minus 2. Now, you see this fraction bar, like we mentioned earlier, this is really like a division sign. So what we're doing is we're taking this whole numerator, we're dividing it by this whole denominator, and you probably learned, when you learned about dividing fractions, that keep it, change it, flip it, or you could say division is like multiplying by the reciprocal, right? So whatever you're dividing by, you multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to take this fraction in the numerator, which is x plus 10, x plus 2, x minus 2. Instead of division now, I'm going to write this as multiplication, and I'm going to flip or take the reciprocal of that fraction that's in the denominator. So this is x plus 2, x minus 2, all over x squared minus 2x plus 4. Now at this point, I want to make sure that everything's factored, the numerator, the denominator, the numerator, the denominator. This we really can't factor any further, so I'm just going to leave it as a trinomial like that. But what we want to do is we want to see if we can reduce top and bottom 
top and bottom or on the diagonals top and bottom. So in this case, I can see that the x plus 2s cancel top and bottom. Same thing with the x minus 2s. So now I've simplified as much as I can. I'm going to multiply horizontally across here, and that gives us x plus 10 in the numerator divided by x squared minus 2x plus 4 in the denominator. I can't simplify that any further, but notice what we've done. We've gotten rid of the complex fraction. We just have one fraction bar here. We don't have fractions within a larger fraction, so we've simplified that complex fraction. So that's method number one. Method number two, let me erase the whiteboard. I'm going to show you how to clear the denominators. Okay, we're going to find a common denominator. We're going to clear those denominators. So let's do that next. The second method of clearing the denominators or multiplying by the least common multiple is a little bit more challenging, but some students will argue that it's a little bit faster. So if you can grasp this method, it can save you some time. But the first thing to understand is how do you find that least common multiple of all the denominators, both the ones in the numerator and the denominator. First thing I want to do is I want to factor the denominators as much as I can. So I notice that this x squared minus 4, like we talked about in the first method, you can factor it as a difference of two squares. But what's a little bit counterintuitive about the least common multiple is that you actually take whatever occurs the most, not the least, right? So it's a little counterintuitive. What do I mean by that? Well, see how we have 1x minus 2 here? No x minus 2s, 1x minus 2, no x minus 2s. We take what occurs the most, which is at most we had 1x minus 2, okay? Now, this one has an x plus 2, no x plus 2, an x plus 2, an x plus 2. So we take out of all those, which one occurs the most? Well, x plus 2 occurred once. Now, if we had an x plus 2 and an x plus 2 squared, I would want to take the x plus 2 squared. I would take the one that occurred the most. But in this case, x plus 2 just occurred at most one time in each of the fractions. So our least common multiple is going to be x minus 2 times x plus 2. So what we're going to do now is we're going to multiply by x minus 2 times x plus 2 to both the numerator and the denominator. Now, look at how I'm writing this, and I'm, I'm doing this on purpose here, is I'm writing it over 1, because anything divided by 1 is itself, but we still have x minus 2, x plus 2, divided by x minus 2, x plus 2, anything divided by itself is 1. It's not going to change the value of this fraction, but what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to multiply it to the numerator, we're going to take this, we're going to multiply it to the denominator, and watch what happens to the denominators, they're going to cancel out or clear. But what we have to do is we have to kind of visualize this as a distributive property. We're taking this and we're distributing it to this fraction. The x minus 2 here and the x minus 2 here are going to cancel. And you're left with x plus 2 that gets multiplied by this 3. So that I'm going to write this as 3 times x plus 2. No denominator, though, because you can see it canceled out, right? Now, when I take this quantity and distribute it to the second fraction, x plus 2 in the denominator, x plus 2 in the numerator, those cancel. I'm just left with an x minus 2 times this 2. No denominator. See, those canceled out. So now looking at the denominator here, I'm going to distribute that like so. If I distribute it to this first fraction, x plus 2, x minus 2 cancels with x plus 2, x minus 2. We're just left with 4. Plus, when I distribute this to this fraction here, the x plus 2s cancel leaving us just with x minus 2 times x. You can see we've cleared that complex fraction. We just have this one fraction bar now, but we need to simplify. So let's go ahead and do that distribute. We get uh, 3x plus 6. I'm going to treat this like a negative 2 and distribute, so that gives us a negative 2x. A negative 2 times a negative 2 is a positive 4 over this is just uh, x squared minus 2x, so this is 4 plus x squared minus 2x. Okay, let's combine like terms, condense it down a little bit further. We've got 3x minus 2x, which is equal to 1x. Positive 6 plus 4 is 10. In the denominator, we have x squared minus 2x plus 4. We can't factor that or simplify this in any way, so that's as far as we can go. We simplified the complex fraction. We just have the one fraction bar. We don't have fractions within a fraction. And you can see this is the exact same answer as we got when we did method number one, 
which was involving like combining these into one fraction by getting a common denominator, combining these into one fraction by getting a common denominator, and then doing that keep it, change it, flip it, where we divide by a fraction, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'll let you decide which method you like better. This method, you can see it's a little bit faster, but you have to identify the least common multiple. The other one, you can just kind of take your time and get two fractions together, these two fractions together, and then you can do the division by multiplying by the reciprocal. Let's go through a second example. We'll do both methods. Test yourself, see if you can do these. We'll go through them together and you can pick your favorite method. Number two, see if you can do this problem. Let's start by using method number one. So what's method number one? We want to get a fraction in the numerator and just a fraction in the denominator. And this is like a division sign. We're going to keep it, change it, flip it, right? So it looks like we already have just one fraction in the numerator. We want to combine these fractions together in the denominator. The first thing I like to do is factor all of the denominators. So here I can see x squared plus 2x minus 3 factors to x plus 3 x minus one. If you need help with factoring, check out my learn how to factor video where I go through the different types. So that's our denominator here. This denominator is already factored, it's just x. So if I wanna combine these two fractions together, I have to get a common denominator. There's really nothing in common. Now sometimes students will say, Mario, well this has an x and this has an x minus one, can I just like subtract one here? And that's not correct because this is a whole group x minus one and this is uh, x, and they really don't have anything in common. One's a monomial, one's a binomial. We can't just subtract one here. This is, we're talking about multiplication of factors, not, not adding or subtracting a constant. So what do we do? Well, we look at what's missing. So what I mean by that is this fraction over here doesn't have this x group. So I'm going to multiply the denominator by x and the numerator by x. This guy over here, it's, it's missing an x minus 1 and an x plus 3. So I'm going to multiply that to the numerator and the denominator. Again, you do it to the top and bottom because anything divided by itself is 1. It won't change the value of that fraction. But now you can see we have a common denominator. We can then combine these two guys into one fraction with that common denominator. So let's do that. Uh, let's see, so what does that come out to? It comes out to our common denominator of x times x minus 1 times x plus 3. In the numerator we have 2x. This, when we FOIL it out, remember that was the x squared plus 2x minus 3. So let's just write that as x squared plus 2x minus 3. And then what we're going to do is we're going to distribute the 3 here. And that comes out to 3x squared plus 6x minus 9. Let's combine like terms. So this comes out to 3x squared plus 8x minus 9 all over x times x minus 1 times x plus 3. Now I don't think I can uh, factor this numerator at all, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Now remember our technique. We're going to keep the numerator, which is 5 over x minus 1. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So this is going to be x times x minus 1 x plus 3 over 3x three squared plus 8x minus 9. Okay, now what we can do is we can reduce numerator and denominator, numerator and denominator, or on the diagonals, numerator and denominator, we can reduce, right? So it looks like this x minus 1 here and this x minus 1 here cancel one another out. And that's about it. So what we're left with is 5x, x plus 3 over 3x squared plus 8x minus 9. We could leave it like that. We could distribute the 5x, kind of simplify a little bit further. So 5x squared plus 15x over 3x squared plus 8x minus 9. And look what happened here. We got rid of the complex fraction. We don't have fractions within a fraction. We just have that single fraction bar. We've reduced it down as much as we can. That's our final result. Now let's do the same problem again using method number two of clearing the denominators by multiplying through by the lowest common denominator. Okay, for example, number two, method number two, we wanna clear the denominators by multiplying through by that lowest common denominator. So the first thing I like to do is factor all the denominators, and this one factors to x plus three, x minus one. So now what we can do is we can take what occurs not the least, 
but the most. So we say I've got 1x minus 1, no x minus 1s, 1x minus 1, which means that we need what occurs the most, which is 1x minus 1. Here we've got 1x, no x, no x. So we take the one that occurs the most, 1x. We have an x plus 3, no x plus 3, no x plus 3. That means we take the one that occurs the most, which is 1x plus 3. Whatever we multiply to the numerator, we have to multiply to the denominator to keep that fraction balanced. And the way I like to think of this is putting this over 1 so that when we multiply, the numerators line up and the denominators line up. So what we're going to do when we distribute here, you can see the x minus 1s are going to cancel top and bottom. We're just left with 5 times x times x plus 3. When we distribute here, the x plus 3 and x minus 1 cancel out, and we're just left with 2 times x. And when we distribute here, the x's cancel out numerator and denominator, and we're just left with 3 times x minus 1, x plus 3. Okay, now we want to simplify. And so what we can do is we can distribute this 5x here. That's going to give us 5x squared plus 15x. Uh, here what we can do is we can foil these together. That comes out to x squared plus 2x minus 3, and then distribute the 3. So that'll be 2x plus 3x squared plus 6x minus 9. Combine like terms, that comes out to, let's see, numerator 5x squared plus 15x. Denominator, we've got 3x squared uh, plus 8x minus 9. And you can see this is the exact same thing that we got in the method number one for this problem. Normally what I would do is I would try to factor as much as I can numerator and denominator to see if it reduces down further. But we got rid of the complex fraction. We don't have fractions within a larger fraction. and We've simplified it and you got it. So if you want to see more examples or you want to practice and test yourself, which I recommend, follow me over to that video right there where I talk more about simplifying complex fractions. I'll see you over in that video.